and they said from the prisoner. Prisoners like these executed in China, their organs harvested for transplant. A very uh, barbaric and disgusting kind of practice. Go undercover with Primetime, from a restricted Chinese military hospital to a New York hotel room. Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross on the trail of blood money. Aren't you here selling the organs of prisoners who have been executed in China? Primetime, now from New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening and welcome to Primetime. Tonight we bring you a story we are sure that you have never seen before. We have learned that human organs are being harvested from executed Chinese prisoners and then sold to patients around the world, including here in the United States. How many? Well, human rights organizations estimate that since 1990, more than 10,000 kidneys from Chinese prisoners have been sold, potentially bringing in tens of millions of dollars to the Chinese military. For the past three months, Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross has followed what is really a black market in human organs. As we begin, you should know that this report contains scenes of graphic violence, and we let it stand as a warning. On a sunny day in New York City, in a hotel room overlooking Central Park, we saw and heard something that for years the United States government has officially maintained does not happen. But our undercover videotape tells a different story, documenting for the first time in this country a grisly but lucrative international black market, the buying and selling of human organs, in this case a kidney, from the bodies of prisoners executed far away in China. You will surely be satisfied with the arrangements for you, and the operation will surely be successful. I can guarantee this, no problem. This was the starting point of a three-month primetime live investigation that took us from Central Park South in New York City to the back alleys of Hong Kong to a restricted military hospital in southern China, equipped with the latest in American medical technology. It's a money-making operation. They're in business. This is an industry and uh, they're uh, moving it around the world. Dr. Ronald Gutman, an advisor to the International Transplantation Society, says it's been an open secret among doctors who do transplants that the Chinese military has been selling the kidneys of executed prisoners, perhaps thousands of them since the late 1980s. In my opinion, a very uh, barbaric and disgusting kind of practice. It makes me cringe, and I think exposing it is uh, very important. It's a question of supply and demand. A ready supply of prisoners to be executed, like these men, and a huge unmet demand for kidneys around the world. This Chinese military videotape, made in 1992 and never intended to be seen outside official circles, shows the condemned men and women paraded through the streets on their way to an execution field. This is a country which last year executed more than 4,000 people, some just petty thieves. It's not known what crimes these prisoners were convicted of, or whether the organs of any of them were about to be sold. But the tape shows guards precisely lining up their guns at the base of the skull. That makes retrieval of kidneys and organs much easier. And Dr. Gutman says certain medical preparations begin well before the execution. They're given uh, anticoagulant drugs, so the blood won't clot when they're executed. They're given muscle relaxants. And then, with a large crowd watching, the command is given. After the execution, doctors removed the prisoner and placed him in the ambulance. A Chinese doctor, Zhao Wei Chang, who now lives in Atlanta, told us what happens once the prisoners are dead based on what he saw at his hospital just before he fled China in 1994. First, there was a cut from the back to extract the kidneys. Dr. Chen from the surgical department also took out the eyeballs and a piece of skin from the dead prisoner's abdomen. The orthopedist cut out one section of the bone from the lower leg. All the extracted organs were placed in a special kind of liquid to maintain the freshness. 
Then they rushed back to the hospital. In the hospital, two patients were lying on the operating table waiting for the transplant. When the ambulance arrived, the kidneys were placed into the patient's bodies. All the other organs were only for laboratory experiments. The rifle right away placed in the back. The graphic tape was secretly removed from military archives and smuggled out of China by an underground group of dissidents and provided to primetime live by a former political prisoner who spent 19 years in a Chinese prison and has become China's most outspoken and despised critic, Harry Wu. This is a fundamental violation of human rights. Just straight ahead. For the last three years, Wu has been traveling the world trying to expose the black market in prisoners' body parts which Wu says has spread from Asia to Europe and now to the United States, as he showed us with a recent copy of a Chinese-language newspaper published in New York. There's a small piece of advertisement right here. What does that say? Kidney transplant in mainland China. Don't miss the opportunity. Call. So we did. <laughs> Our call to the advertised number in Bridgeport, Connecticut, led to this meeting in a New York City hotel with a Chinese doctor and his wife, a doctor and Mrs. Dai, who, with our hidden cameras rolling, told us they had already helped provide kidneys for several Americans, but that because of Harry Wu, everything had to be kept very quiet. You've probably heard of Harry Wu. I have to be careful because people calling us might have the same agenda as Harry Wu. We are fully aware of the sensitive nature of this issue. Usually, we don't talk about this. With the help of a woman who works with Harry Wu, yeah, we told the Chinese basis. doctor that a kidney was needed for a sick brother. And the oh, doctor told us advice. no problem, that he knew a month in advance that a new batch of prisoners' kidneys would soon be available. At the end of July, there will definitely be kidney sources that will match your brother's situation in age and everything if you are willing to go there around the 20th of July to receive a kidney from the July batch. The total price for a transplanted kidney, according to Dr. Dai, $30,000 in cash with a down payment to be made in New York. If you decide to go ahead with this, then you pay us $5,000, and we will order and reserve a kidney and a bed in the hospital. The hospital we were to be sent to is a hospital which, as the sign outside in English says, belongs to the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, called the Nan Feng Hospital, three hours north of Hong Kong. We came here as tourists, given the Chinese government's denial that it's in the business of selling the organs of executed prisoners and we asked two Chinese dissidents to carry a hidden camera inside. This is the heart of the military's kidney business, an elaborate medical complex, where patients told us numerous foreigners had just received or were waiting to receive kidney transplants, among hundreds of foreigners who have received kidneys here in the last few years. I just talked to the doctor. One of them was 38-year-old Apple Yunuch of Bangkok. First time I asked the doctor, where where can I get a kidney? And they said from the prisoner. That prisoner's kidney is now in her body. And even though it saved her life, the experience has left Ms. Yunuch full of regret and willing to talk with prime time, breaking the circle of silence that has surrounded what goes on at the Nang Feng Military Hospital. First, she said, doctors in China took her blood and tissue samples and then sent her home to wait. 3rd of January, the doctor called me that there will be an execution it means the prisoners, some prisoners are going to be shot dead. And one of them matches up with you? Yes. So I have to come over and prepare myself to, be, uh, to, to, to get the operation, kidney operation. Six days later, according to the local newspaper, 45 prisoners were sentenced to death and executed on the same day, including one who apparently, even before he had been sentenced to death, was found to have the same blood and tissue type as Apple Yunuch. So they were shot in the morning and the transplant was in the in, afternoon? In the afternoon, yes. Were there also other people who got transplants? Yes, yes. With kidneys from executed prisoners? Yes. In the course of our investigation, we also found that a big American corporation had played an important role here, the W.R. Grace Company, which through a joint business venture with the Chinese Army, equipped and helped to run a kidney dialysis center where, in addition to routine dialysis, 
transplant patients are kept going while they await surgery upstairs. W.R. Grace sold its kidney dialysis business last year, and a company spokesman denied that current management knew anything about the use of prisoners' kidneys for transplant. But a former top Grace executive who regularly visited the hospital in China told Primetime that he was well aware of what was going on there. In our final meeting in New York with the Chinese doctor and his wife, who told us they were here on student visas and had connections back in China, we were assured the best medical care awaited us and that the kidney we bought would come from a healthy prisoner who would be thoroughly tested before he was shot. Regarding the prisoner's health, they're all given physical checkups and blood tests. They don't carry hepatitis or anything like that. All those carrying these diseases will be excluded. You see, there are so many criminals, they have a lot to choose from. And then we gave the doctor what he had come for, $5,000 in cash, down payment for a healthy kidney from a prisoner in China. Federal law and the state laws of New York and Connecticut make it illegal to buy or sell any human organs. Dr. Dye? Hey, yes. Brian Ross from ABC News. And when we entered the room with our cameras showing, the doctor immediately denied knowing anything about prisoners or executions. Aren't you here selling the organs of prisoners who have been executed in China? No. You're not? No. What, what do you think the $5,000 is for? $5,000 is introduced as is a kind of service charge, right? How many people no. have you introduced to China? No. How many? No, I, it's, 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 uh, I, I don't want to. Um, it's, I, I think it's, it's my business. By some estimates, the kidney business has meant tens of millions of dollars to the Chinese military, which, even as the black market has expanded around the world, continues to deny any such business actually exists. In a letter to Primetime, the Chinese embassy in Washington suggested we stop production of our story, saying, quote, the so-called sale of criminals' organs in China is a deliberate fabrication with ill intentions, and that in the rare instance when a prisoner's organ is used, the death row criminals voluntarily sign up. Yeah, Dr. Gutman says that back. makes a mockery of international principles adopted in the wake of Nazi medical experiments. Uh, there's no such thing as, uh, first of all, as uh, uh, consent when you're talking about incarcerated people uh, to say, uh, well, we can produce a piece of paper that the prisoner has given consent uh, before we kill him uh, is kind of a, a ludicrous thing. No other country in the world is known to use the organs of prisoners except for China, which, based on our primetime live investigation, appears to have turned its chilling executions of thousands of people into a multi-million dollar black market of a kind the world has never seen. The U.S. State Department says that it has received reports in the past about organs from prisoners being sold, but could not confirm them. They told us they were eager to see our story tonight, and we'll talk with Harry Wu. The Hong Kong government is expected to introduce legislation next week that would ban the trade in human organs from China. The Taiwanese government is expected to follow suit shortly. Now, they're responding to pressure from human rights groups who protest that China is using executed prisoners to supply human organs. About 2,000 such operations are performed in China every year, many on foreigners who pay up to 30,000 pounds for a kidney transplant. China says the consent of the prisoner is obtained in advance. You may find some of the pictures in this report by Sue Lloyd Roberts disturbing. Sentencing to death in China is a public affair. On special days like National Day and the New Year, which are televised, the number can swell to a hundred in one day. The crimes of these young people, some only teenagers, 
range from murder to car theft or mere political dissent. The prisoners are taken immediately to the execution site and killed with efficiency and the minimum of ceremony. But the story doesn't end here. As the prisoners are prepared, an unmarked van leaves the local hospital, carrying the doctors and equipment necessary to extract the prisoners' organs immediately after death at the execution site. Young prisoners, those under 25, are the preferred targets for this purpose. The Chinese tell you that it enables the condemned men to pay their debt back to society. In this hospital in central China, I was allowed to film a patient as he was prepared to receive an organ. Chinese doctors now working in the West say that 90% of the organs used in transplants come from executed prisoners, and there's a lucrative trade developing in patients coming to China for this purpose from America, Europe, and nearby Hong Kong. It's believed hundreds of foreigners are coming to China every year for their kidney transplants to hospitals like this in Canton that services the Hong Kong market and that the number is increasing all the time. What worries human rights organizations is the possible connection between this growing business and the increase in the number of death sentences being handed out in China today. There is no system of voluntary organ donors in China and patients recovering in the transplant wards tell you that executed prisoners make ideal organ donors. They told me my kidney came from an executed prisoner because you get them fresh that way, because from the taking out of the kidney, it is only a few hours to get it transplanted in me. But outsiders tend to take a less sympathetic view. I don't think that doctors should be associated with death chambers. I have, I have a hard time believing that you can dissociate a post-execution process from the execution process itself. And I think that uh, executions are uh, issues that should be left to the, uh, the state and the judiciary to decide whether they do them or not, and that, that the medical profession should stay away. But at hospital number one in Chengdu, they're delighted with the commercial benefits of the system. They're rebuilding here at the cost of eight million dollars, money, they say, that's coming from patients from abroad. There are luxuries here unheard of for locals, like rooms with televisions and ensuite bathrooms, but ideal for patients from Hong Kong, Japan, and America, who pay the hospital around $30,000 per transplant. Posing as potential buyers with the American writer and former Chinese dissident Harry Wu, we inquired at the hospital about arranging an operation for a fictitious sick relation. We were told there'd be no problem, and they were used to foreigners. Which from America? America. Maybe the majority of America and something for somebody from Macau or Hong Kong or something. We were then referred to Dr. Young for an initial consultation, a meeting that I filmed secretly. The quality of our kidneys is better than in America because we can remove the kidney fast and at the appropriate time. Basically, as soon as we know the donor is brain dead, we can get at the kidney with the minimum fuss. And we can guarantee several kidneys in one month. The distance between where we remove the kidney and the transplant is short. We can do it all in less than 10 hours. In America, it takes more than 20 hours. It was then time to discuss money with Comrade Wu, chief party member and foreign liaison officer at the hospital. Again, we had to film it secretly. No, we don't take credit cards, she said. We prefer cash, preferably dollars. Things are done differently in this country compared with yours. We can do what is impossible from the legal point of view in your country. But she got quite agitated when we asked her outright whether the organs came from prisoners. I'm not talking about whether it is prisoners or not. In China, we believe that it is much better if not too many people get involved in this kind of thing. <laughs> My point is that you would be well advised not to get involved in this. It could get complicated. 
Most of the information about the execution and transplant program in China comes from outside, from expatriate Chinese like Gao Peiji, former deputy police commander, who's currently seeking political asylum in Britain. He fled China after exposing corruption among his colleagues, and he's familiar with the detail of the executions. There are 2,300 towns and provincial centers in China, and each has a prison where every year they carry out a number of executions. So at the very least, we are talking about several thousand, maybe even more than 10,000 executions in China a year. In the north, all the executions are carried out by shooting in the head. That way, it leaves the organs intact in the rest of the body to be removed for transplant. For the most part, they remove handcuffs and leg irons from the prisoner before tying his hands behind his back with a rope. They also put a rope around his neck to stop him shouting out anti-government slogans before he dies. In the south, they sometimes shoot in the heart. That way, they can get at the corneas for transplant. The executioners stab the prisoners in the back with a bayonet to make the body go rigid to ensure that the marksman can get a good shot. The Chinese government have admitted that they use the organs of executed prisoners, but they say it happens only in rare instances and only with the consent of the person executed. According to the 1984 laws on the use of dead bodies or organs from condemned criminals, organs can be taken from uncollected dead bodies or the ones that family members refuse to collect and from those condemned criminals who themselves or whose families give consent. But Mr. Gao disagrees. In the 10 years that I worked for the Public Security Bureau, I never saw or heard anything to suggest that death row prisoners were asked for consent before donating organs. Nor was the family asked. In fact, more often than not, the prisoner's family would be held under house arrest by the Public Security Bureau while the execution was taking place. Only by agreeing to pay the authorities for the urn would they be allowed to come and collect the ashes. In most villages and towns in China today, you'll find execution notices. Human rights organizations claim that the number of death sentences being passed in China today is higher than at any time since the 1950s. Here, a notice with four young people under 25 sentenced to death in towns hundreds of miles from their own homes. They're among the millions of mainly young people who are roaming China looking for work today. It's often these people who turn to crime and who, anonymous and far from home, become death row prisoners and then, unwittingly, organ donors. We know in Chinese political environment, once one become a criminal, especially a political criminal, most of the family must openly denounce that. No one dares to pick up the body. So it becomes the government properties. At present, there's 70 million people is traveling around in the country looking for a job. And most of them are young, low education peasants. If once they commit the crimes, it's sentenced and executed far away from the native lands, most of them are not available to pick up their body. It's the involvement of doctors in China in this operation that appalls the medical profession in the West, and especially reports of organs being removed before execution, that is, vivisection. This is confirmed by a doctor who has since fled China and must remain anonymous. He says he was part of a team that was ordered to take both kidneys from prisoners who were still alive. I was ordered to take both kidneys from an anesthetized prisoner. Without both kidneys, a person dies within 24 hours. After I had sewn him up, the organs were taken away by helicopter. Of course, kidneys are better fresh, and I can only assume they were for a high-ranking party member. It's 
this kind of behavior that outrages Dr. Gutman and has led him to call for a boycott by doctors outside China against doctors and hospitals involved in the organ transplant business in China. I think that uh, the field gets a very bad name when unethical practices are uh, go on anywhere in the world, and in fact, it affects organ donation rates in the countries where uh, transplants are done in an ethical way, and this is of great concern to me. There'll always be a demand for organs from China's death rows there's a shortage worldwide. In Hong Kong, only a few dozen transplant operations are performed every year, while the waiting list runs into hundreds. The members of the Hong Kong Transplant Society consider themselves the lucky ones. They managed to get to China for their new organs. 19-year-old Li Chi Bun borrowed money from family and friends for the operation. He and the other patients are still in debt, and although the transplants save their lives, they do have reservations. I felt very happy when I got my new kidney in China. But when I thought that it might have come from executed prisoners, I felt sad. He might just be a petty thief, but they executed him. Some of them could be innocent. In Hong Kong, People would say it was violating human rights to use the organs of executed prisoners. But in China, there's no such thing as human rights. If you have money, you can do anything. Although the Hong Kong government is introducing laws to ban the trade in organs on its territory, it argues that in a colony that rejoices in the free market, it's powerless to do more. There's no way that Hong Kong can through laws or otherwise stop people from going to China for treatment, one way or the other, uh, and of course transplantation is a form of treatment. For decades, the people of China have been the victims of one of the most ruthless penal systems in the world. Today, that system is making them victims of the marketplace too. Sue Lloyd Roberts reporting. from China trading in the currency of human lives. From NBC News, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. We have an alarming, even astounding story out of China tonight. It involves death row prisoners and the market for human organs. NBC's Keith Miller. The temperature here is 94.7 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the image of harvesting human organs in American pop culture, the 1978 movie Coma, where healthy people were murdered on demand so their organs could be transplanted into wealthy patients. This concludes our tour of But today, in China, is life imitating art? This is a public execution in China. According to Human Rights Watch Asia, some of the organs from these condemned men will be sold for transplant surgery to wealthy foreigners, many of them Chinese Americans. As the prisoners are prepared for execution, an unmarked van leaves the local hospital carrying doctors and the equipment to remove the organs. Amnesty International says at least 1,400 prisoners were executed in China last year, but others estimate it could be near 10,000. The actual number is a state secret. The removed organs go to major hospitals in at least 12 Chinese cities where the transplant is done immediately. Chinese doctors now living in the West say 90% of the kidneys and corneas used in the Chinese transplant program come from executed prisoners. A total of perhaps 3,000 such organs is harvested annually. Gao Peiji, a former deputy police commander who fled China, explains the care taken. The executioner stabbed the prisoners in the back with the bayonet to make the body go rigid, to ensure that the marksman can get a good shot. In the West, a patient in need of a kidney must normally wait. In the United States, about a year and a half, two years in Great Britain. Using a hidden camera, freelance journalist Sue Lloyd Roberts went to hospital number one in Chengdu in central China, seeking a kidney for a fictitious relative. The quality of our kidneys is better than in America because we can remove the kidney fast. 
Yes. And we can guarantee several kidneys in one month. I was then assured that when I brought my fictitious sick relation to China, the operation could be done within hours, which can only lead one to assume that the prisoner is shot on demand. Comrade Wu, foreign liaison officer with the hospital, becomes agitated when asked if the organ comes from a prisoner. I'm not talking about whether it is prisoners or not. You would be well advised not to get involved in this. Uh, prisoners are being executed for many reasons, and the Chinese are taking advantage of that to supply organs in a culture that frowns upon organ donation. But outrage on the part of Western transplant specialists has not stopped the Chinese trade in human organs. Western governments, anxious to improve relations with China, have taken no meaningful steps. So the Chinese organ business has been growing each year, as have the executions. Keith Miller, NBC News.